the part that does work for me is that when I'm editing, I'm not precious at all about the drawings. They're just loose scribbles. Uh, and they're detailed enough where they're legible to share with friends and editors. So I draw them detailed enough so that I can show them to people and they can actually you know, um, immerse themselves in the story. But also for myself, if I'm drawing the pages two years later, I have to know what the hell I was thinking. Um, so there's an example where the, the thumbnail and the final art are, uh, are pretty similar, pretty consistent. Because when I'm drawing the final art, I'm not really even thinking about um, the mechanics of the story anymore. I'm thinking about the mechanics of drawing. So I'm thinking about laying a brush line down and uh, a figure drawing, perspective drawing, backgrounds. It kind of frees up my brain to compartmentalize it into this new mode. Um, uh, other other th things in the book change dramatically from the thumbnails to the final art. This is a sequence. So Dodola, some of you are familiar with her now, and others she'll be brand new. But she is a she's modeled after Scheherazade in a way. She tells stories for survival, and those stories are interwoven with the main relationship between her and Zam. And uh, in the earliest drafts. Uh, because of the, the influence of 1001 Nights, she was recycling a lot of those stories. So this was one of these many crazy, fantastical stories from Arabian Nights. Um, and I later stripped away a lot of the fantastical elements in the book. I mean, in the earliest drafts, there was many more genies and crazy magic things happening too. But I became less and less interested in the fantastical. And became more interested in, in Quranic and biblical stories and the connections between them. So um, instead of having her tell stories from Arabian, Arabian Nights, she started telling stories of the prophets. And I started thinking of each chapter along with an Arabic letter and its numeric value and the geometric design uh, would encompass a prophet. And this one was Jesus, uh, the second most important prophet in Islam. And uh, this, I'm sorry this has been on the screen for this long, uh, but this, this uh, spread illustrates uh, the constant uh, juxtaposition of ugliness and beauty of the sacred and profane in Habibi. So on the left, there's this horrible old man's hairy ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, then, and then on the right, there's this graceful image of Jesus walking on the water. And that was a sort of meditation of the book. It wasn't something I was shying away from. I always wanted these fuller energies of human ugliness and spiritual beauty, the sacred and profane, um, and, and this, the, a mashup of the, the, uh, the sacred medium of holy books, like the Quran, like the Bible, and the uh, trashy, vulgar, pulp medium of comics. These two literatures that imprinted themselves on me as a young child. Uh, this, is, this is probably a, one of the earliest inspirations, uh, family stories of the Bible in full color. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and I, so this was a comic, this isn't the exact copy I had as a kid. I got this at a thrift store, but it's the same content, it's just repackaged with the Faith Kids Fizzy logo. Uh, I love how Christianity does a good job of sort of like commodifying and pop culturing up their religion. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the earliest influences, and uh, on Habibi, this book, which is just stories from both Old Testament and Gospels in comics form, and uh, I saw Chester Brown recently, some of you are familiar with his work and his new crazy book, um, I saw him in Toronto on this tour, and he said that this was one of his major inspirations as a child too, uh, and that he had the same, same copy. Maybe not the exact same. Well, actually, I probably got it from the thrift store. It was Chester Brown's copy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, I should probably acknowledge him too as an influence because in the 90s he was doing, uh, you know, illustrating the comics. Or, I'm sorry, the Gospels in comics form, and that was probably one of those early nuggets that um, planted itself and emerged later as Habibi.